the most important question today in the housing or real estate market is when does inventory show up? You have heard from Beth Traverso, Adrian Hernandez, and many other agents on my channel that the spring selling season didn't happen. You've <laughs> heard from you've heard from Logan and Lance that active list or new listings are down 30%, active inventory is down 40, 50%. So you know what? When is inventory coming? I have my ideas. There's been an article on CNBC talking about rates. So let's have this conversation with Mr. Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm excited to have this conversation because it's a big another. We've been telling people this. This is what. Yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about housing, transaction crash. Um, people real dude, people really don't like to hear that this could, this non spring selling season could last two or three years. They don't like hearing that. Dude, it sucked. Like for us, I don't know what your market's like, but for us, our spring selling season really is a very big, big, big thing because we have real winter here. Yeah. Yeah. We have very cool. real winter here. And so yeah. it is in November, December, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, holidays, Christmas, New Year's. Um, and then you go into January, February, March. It is zero here or 10. People aren't like, hey, so let's move school districts. Nope. People aren't like, hey, who wants to move in a blizzard? Not me. And yeah. so that's the challenge, right? Is that you look at it and our spring season here is very much March. It starts to heat up, but then April, May, and June are ridiculous. And yeah. we didn't have it. We didn't. Well, it was, it was ridiculous, but usually you can walk, drive up and down every single street and you'll see at least one for sale sign. Right. And now not. In yeah. fact, I was going around when we would yard sale on Saturdays with the kids, every neighborhood we would go to, we would do a yard sale. Very rarely was there a house for sale. But when there was, when there was an open house on Saturdays, when we yard sale, I would take a picture of it. There were 30, 40, 50 cars you wrapped around the streets. I mean, you see my Instagram, it was crazy. And you I know what? It. Five offers, seven offers, nine offers. Wasn't anything like they told us it would be. No. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the, the idea was, is rates are going to come down to five and then it's going to create a ton of sellers. That, what I mean, that's even a question, right? I mean, yeah. you, you, we've talked about all the numbers from black Knight and some others now are reporting how many people have below three, below four, below 5%. Really what market is the most broken simply is the move up buyer. The move up buyer is important to housing because they are two transactions. I sell a, and I buy B. When you yeah. lose that person, again, you lose two transactions. Yes. And you lose all the inventory for the for the first time home buyers. Yes. Right. Because it's usually the first time home buyer that is moving up, selling A to go B. And I mean, how many people again, just think about the lifestyle, right? Lance Lambert, somebody's on my channel every Thursday, Fortune Editor. He he and I talked in our very first video. He's like, Hey, I should have bought a bigger home. Yeah. I said, What do you mean? Well, my wife's pregnant, right? We need an extra bedroom. But oh, I can't move now because, you know, I got a 2.7 or whatever it is interest rate. And if I want, because if I want to be a bigger home in a nice little school district, it's an extra hundred grand, but it's not actually an extra hundred grand. When you look at the payment, his it's payment huge. almost went over double. It's like 223% or something. Yeah. It's like, who's making that trade off? Nobody. It's, you know, it's one of the things, and one of the things we'll talk about in the next video. So uh, I'll, we'll kind of tease it there, but if you look at what is going on with rents, mm. they crash in Mike no. rents crashing. No, not in single family homes, not in apartments, not in small multifamily apartments, not in smaller apartment buildings, large multifamily. Yeah. But that's where we're seeing the adjustments. Yes, exactly. That's where we're seeing the adjustments. And that's quite frankly, Mike, where we always see the adjustments. We always yeah. see it there first. And then yeah. they have all the inventory coming. It's all right. the new stuff is luxury. So you add a more supply to a, you know, a constrained buy or renter. Of course, that's what, that's, yeah. that's how the system works. As you know, I'm not a fan of building brand spanking new. I want to take an old building and I want to make it great again. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at that building, right, that we just did four one bedroom apartments, mm -hmm. 450 ish square feet a piece. Oh, wow. Yeah. One bed, one bath, 450 square feet. And it's right in downtown. Just take a wild stab at what I'm getting, and and take a wild stab at what I'm getting for rents. 
So I have some of that inventory in my market. We get a thousand bucks. We when I first bought them, we was three seventy five. Oh and dear I, God! I, I bought them. Well, I bought these yeah. 13, 14 years okay. ago. But still, still three triple three seventy five when we bought it. Now a thousand dollars. So so no idea. I originally when I started this project a year ago, I was like, I'm going to try and reach for the stars and get to sixteen ninety five. Oh, wow! Yeah. Okay. I finished the project two weeks ago. And I said, all right, what's going to start to market it? Did my rent box, start to look at my rent box, start to look at what's going on in the market, start to look at all the new construction inventory that's out there on the market and how expensive it is. Realize that I want to find the riches are in the niches. I want to find the soft spot. I want to find the market at brand new minus 20%, 25%. And can I get to that number? That number was 1995 for a one bedroom, 450 square foot apartment. Three out of four wow. units rented on the first day. <laughs> wow. Three out of four on the first day. And the people with, I mean, and I'll give you a slice of the type of tenant. They were, it was two couples and one PhD student. Yeah, and when we looked at the numbers, they all had over a hundred thousand dollars a year of income. They all had over seven hundred and fifty credit scores. There you go, fantastic. So yeah. again, we look at it and we say, yes, everyone's just looking at the housing market. Put yourself in that person's position that's looking to then move, just like Lance Lambert. He yeah. looks at it and says, if I move, it's going to cost me two hundred and twenty-three percent more to move, right. on top of a hundred grand. 100 grand plus 223% more. So then every what does month, he look at? Every right. month. Every month. Every month. And so then he looks at it and goes, all right, well, what are my other options? I can either stay where I am. I probably can't build. I don't know where he is, but if he could build, he would, but he probably can't. And so his other option is, well, what if we just try and get adventurous and try and wait this thing out and rent? And then he goes and he looks at rents and he has a heart attack because yeah. the rents are so out of whack with even what mortgages are. So- there's nowhere well, for those well, folks just to think turn. about the uneducated economist. Yeah. Right. The uneducated economist was a renter, had always planned to be a renter. He had a foreclosure in his story. Yep. His his landlord says, I'm selling the place. Yep. He buckles down, takes every scratches, every penny he has, buys a house, gets, you know, great interest rate. Now his mortgage payment, less than rent for a two bedroom. Exactly. He's exactly. not going anywhere. He's an owner. Ex own and that's the thing is you got to look at it. And so when all these talking heads come on. And they say, hey, 5% mortgage rates are going to do this. You have to look at it, how it fits in the entire ecosystem. It's all of right. housing. It's how does that apply to rents? How does that apply to new build? How does that apply to the new high rises? Is that something that's available in your area? Is that person? People have never been so portable in all their lives. Yeah. But that's still becoming a problem for some places now. You know, now that people want people back in the office, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an amazing, amazing thing to watch. And you have to look at it every day because you don't know what the next trend that's going to occur is. And now Airbnbs and all these people thinking that Airbnb getting outlawed in a bunch of these areas is going to all of a sudden create all this other inventory. No, they're going to try and turn it into long-term rentals. And then when they can't do that, then they might be forced to sell. But do you think that they can actually sell and make a profit if they overpaid that much based on an Airbnb valuation? No. Yeah. And the other thing again, is it's timing back to our other video about, the median home price being down. I mean, yeah, you're going to have some stress Airbnb buyers that are forced sellers, but yeah. it'll be onesie twosies, right? It's, it's not Agreed. mass. It's not 2010 folks. I was buying back then and it was, it was a standard process on Monday. If you had the time and you found out who the REO agents were Monday morning, they would get a list of new properties. They had to comp and put in the MLS. Yeah. If you had the relationships, you could get that spreadsheet. You could write offers Monday afternoon right. and maybe buy a couple. Their lists were typically over a hundred oh. every week in my little market. That is awesome. Not in my market. That was the thing is we didn't see a ton of it here. And even, even now we're seeing a little bit. So Mike, I'm looking at the foreclosure list. Okay. Okay. Is it very long? It's not long. It's still, it's still way below average, but it's finally picking up momentum, which is okay. what I want to see, right? Yeah, I of course. See that. Yeah. As, as an investor, I want to see that. But the average estimated home value of what they're posting 
$700,000. Oh, wow. Now, it's like 45 minutes away from me. And I looked at that market. That market's an expensive market, but 700 grand. And those were houses that 10 years ago, five years ago were four, 450. Yeah. Hard to cash flow that. Yeah, it's impossible to it, especially in my state where it's all which all property tax. Yeah. So I think we continue to watch, you know, we'll continue to watch foreclosures. And I, obviously they're going to tick up. I think there's going to be a season where they probably eclipse the quote unquote norm. Okay. The norm just eclipse the norm. However, yeah. however, well, we have two years to make up for. Let's not forget. Yeah. But that's the thing, right? Yeah. How do how let's talk about how why we should care how we got there? Because we have two years to make up for. And finally, the banks have to say, you know, all right, even when I rewrite this on a 40 year mortgage with a great note and, and an adjusted, you know, percentage, you still don't make enough. So we're just going to cut bait right now and you just need to sell the house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you don't, we will. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. And there's yeah. something, I mean, there's something in it for the homeowner. Like people still have equity. I don't know where all these places are where people are able to buy stuff when people have no equity in the home. That's got to be something they purchased in the last year or two. Oh, for sure. Or just yeah, fully I mean, levered it with crazy debt. That's the only thing it could be. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I think this is really interesting time. Again, the real question of that CNBC article is, is 5% the magic number? Yeah. Right. If 5% is the magic number, the supply unlocks. I got to tell you, based on all the conversations I had with brokers, the demand will go up more. So if supply goes up 30%, I would guess demand goes up 60%. Because again- as rates Agreed. come in, we have evidence yes. that as rates go sub six, demand explodes. If it yes. gets down to five, I, I can I can only imagine what would happen. Have you ever seen, and, and, I, and I, I don't remember because I never bought points when I was buying mm -hmm. stuff um, or buying points down. Yeah. I have seen point sales for as much as a full one percentage point off of the mortgage mm -hmm. for between three and three quarters and four and a half points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my, so again, I, I had my points, I had my interest rate go from seven to 4.99, call it two oh. points. They, they had to spend five points to do that. Okay. But that's a better deal. That's five points for two. Yeah. Five points. I'm seeing four points for one. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's all because banks are wh what banks are doing is they want to prevent refis in the future. That's yes. what they're doing. And yep. they yep. don't want to lend. Bank that's what people don't want to don't understand about this environment. Agreed. Uh, the Sluice Report Senior Loan Officer Opinion Survey came out yesterday and they're basically like we're tightening credit on everything. Of course, finally. And it's going to get worse from here. Um so banks banks want to raise cash. They don't want to lend. Right. Because they're insolvent. A lot of banks are insolvent today. So they just want to raise cash, 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 so they don't lend. So it's going to be a really interesting time. I I, I am legit like apprehensive if rates go to 5%, what happens to demand versus supply? Because yeah, supply might go up, but if demand goes up 3x, have we done anything? I don't know. See, that's the thing is, I think if we get to five, then you've got people that are going to buy it to four and a half or four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why we, that's why I entered the points buying into the conversation is because you could literally get somebody with a three, nine, nine handle. Exactly. If the and average rate do? is five, it's just. The housing market is broken, dude. The freaking housing market is broken. wicked. I mean, I'm too low, go <laughs> too long. It's all, it's just, and, and the only answer is not one people want to hear. We need a decade to clean it up. We need life events to stack up. We yep. need, People have mortgage pay down. We need to have a recession. I mean, ugh. well, it's just like anything. There's nothing fun about cleansing the system. No, it's never. This is just going to be long. It, again, folks, um, actually, we may do this in the next video. Yeah, I will remind. Actually, we'll do it in the next video. We'll stop this one here. Uh, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram. Check me out. 1130 a.m. Eastern times on Sunday. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Mike.